Today we're going to have a look at a Jones and Shipman uh, cylindrical grinder. This is a universal IDOD. This is a model 1305. The capacity of the machine is 10 by 40. So it's a pretty big grinder. Uh, it's currently wired for 440 volts. It takes a 14 inch grinding wheel with a 5 inch bore. Um, we can go over a couple of the controls here. Obviously this is to start your hydraulics and your grinding spindle and your workhead and your coolant system. Coolant system goes on the left side of the machine. The hydraulic system is mounted over here on the right side. Uh, the machine is equipped with a plunge feed and also a pick feed. Um, you have automatic table, traverse, um, the wheel slide rotates around 180 degrees so that you can bring the ID spindle into the front. I'm just going to take off some of these covers that we have for it. It has splash guards going around the back. Um, the headstock is either live or dead depending on how you set it up. So if you wanted to rotate the spindle and use a collet or use a chuck on it, uh, you could do that. Or if you wanted to lock the spindle to be stationary, and just have the outer driving drum here uh, rotating around the fixed spindle for uh, grinding between centers. You could do that also. Uh, there's uh, variable speeds that you can get when you open up the cover here and, and switch the belts from different, uh, different, to different shifts to give you different speeds. Um, you have a fine increment dial here on your, on your longitudinal table so if you were grinding apart by hand which you could do on this machine uh, you can engage this by tightening it and then you'd be able to make uh, slight movements with the, with the knob here. Same with your infeed. You've got a mechanism here where you have a, a way to uh, pull this out a little bit and, and give yourself an extra tenth or two tenths or three tenths whatever you want. Um, in this position here this would be coming in. This is normal um, you could pull the center knob out and then you have a coarse feed. So if you wanted to go from the back to the front or when you spin your head around and you have your ID spindle and you want to get that uh, where you want it, you can move it rapidly with, with this here. Uh, you also have this little guy here where each time you push it, it gives you a, 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 an increment. And this is your um, stop pin, your, your fixed stop, your dead stop, your zero. Now when this feeds, this hand wheel will move um, incrementally each time, whether it's in plunge or whether it's in traverse. Uh, and this adjustment on the side tells you uh, or gives you the amount that it picks each time. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. If we want to uh, move this table by hand, we put that lever down and that automatically disengages this. And then here would be your table speed. You can go fast or slow. Now when I want to engage my automatic infeed, I put that down. And then we feed here on each reversal. And the amount that that feeds is adjusted here. It also has, now this knob in the center here is your control knob. Uh, in, this, in, the, in the center position, it allows you to work this by hand. Once you push that down, you engage the gearing in there and you can no longer turn this by hand. But when you push this pin over to this side and then do this, you get the plunge feed. Now the plunge feed, this can be slowed down with this knob here. Again, this is the frequency, but this is the amount. So that's the way you could uh, do a, several different plunge grinds uh, in production. And when you want to stop that, you would just put this down again. Now this the machine doesn't have a rapid stroke in and out, so everything has to be done. Uh, when you get down to your final size zero, you have, to, you have to back this out. Guys usually count one, two, three turns, so they know when they put the next part to come in one, two, three, and then uh, however much stock removal they're going to have. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this up now. Another thing I want to show you is um, I'm going to take off some more covers here.
the ID spindle is mounted in the back of the machine in its own little sleeve here. Now there's a bolt under here, a nut, and a nut, another one on the opposite side, a scale along here, and a witness mark. And when you want to rotate this around, um, this will go all the way around so that you can have this in the front. I still got more, more guards over here that would need to come off in order to do that. And you would lock this in here on your 90 degree or your, your zero mark. Now, of course, when you're using the ID grinder, you're going to want to have uh, a faceplate on here or, or probably a chuck on here, not a collet, and certainly not a center. And this one grinding motor here works the grinding wheel as well as your ID spindle. I'll just take this off for a moment. And we put a brand new belt on it. We did a lot of work on this machine. We took the column off, we took the slide apart, we made sure all the lubrication was good, we replaced some metering units, we had the table off and the swivel table off. Uh, so it's in pretty nice shape. So when I start this up, you're going to be running both the grinding wheel and the uh, internal, um, and you know, these internal grinders, uh, wheels, spindles, they make a lot of noise. So if you're really not going to do ID grinding, I would recommend just taking the belt off uh, so you don't have to listen to this all the time. Um, so there's your ID spindle, that's going around. Uh, I'm not sure of the RPM, and here you would want to bring this in. So you can get it on center or wherever you want to be, and um, that's how you would do that. Now your headstock, it turns on there, and you could start your grinding. You would have to set that up. Now you would have to be careful that you come out of the bore before you try to go back, uh, because this doesn't do it for you automatically. But again. It's not a full production machine, it's a tool room machine, uh, so that's how you work with it. Now, we want to shut this off. Let that wind down. Um, let me put this back to the external mold here. So you want to be careful you don't hit anything. And you swivel this around. And you could set it on an angle if you wanted to. So we bring this back to zero and we would lock that down. For now we won't. So now to start the OD wheel and your So right now we've got our headstock running, our spindle turning, and we should be in our incremental uh, traverse grinding mode. Inside here is the hydraul... Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, some machines have it on the inside. This one is mounted on the outside. So that's it. That's the Jones & Shipman. It's a 10 by 40 machine, 14 inch grinding wheel with a 5 inch bore. Uh, Heavy duty grinder, nice machine. That's the Jones and Shipman 1305. Thank you very much.